Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to use the double declining balance method in order to calculate depreciation within Excel. Now if you'd like to get the workbook that you're about to see, you can go to teachexcel.com, search for the video tutorial, and you can download it there. So what I'm going to show you how to do is to use the equals DDB function in Excel. And this is it right here. Now, I'm really only giving this tutorial um, just to sort of round out the depreciation tutorials because I want to preface everything by saying this you should never use the DDB function in Excel as far as I can tell it's pretty much worthless there's a variable declining balance method function which can do the same thing except for um, quite a bit more accurately so really, unless you don't want to depreciate the full amount of your assets or your salvage value is <clears throat> your salvage value is very high compared to the initial cost of the asset, then um, this function isn't really going to work too well. So you should know that right now, um, but if you still want to learn it, continue to watch. Okay, so I've got the function right here, nice and highlighted. And what I have is um, an asset with an initial cost, so it costs me to purchase it, $500,000. I can sell it for $25,000, the salvage value, after five years. Lifetime is five years, or you could say the useful life of the asset is five years. Now I have um, five years down here written, so we can calculate the depreciation for each year. I have a period column here just to make it a little bit easier for me to do my calculations because I'm going to have to put in the formula for the period argument 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now there are other ways to enter this period argument but just to illustrate the formula here it's easiest to show you how to do it this way. So let's start out the formula is equal D D B open parentheses. The first thing we need plain and simple the cost of the asset this cell right here now I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard to make sure that cell reference does not change when I copy the formula. Comma, salvage value, this cell right here. Hit F4 to make sure that value does not change. You can see the dollar signs appear when I hit F4. Comma, the life of the asset right here. Now I'm going to hit F4 to make it absolute reference. Comma, the period right here and I'm not going to hit F4 here because I want the period to change every time I move the cell down. Now the other way that I that uh, you could do the period and if this confuses you don't worry about it just real quick the other way is to do a formula called row. Now row is going to return the number the corresponding number of every row so if I select a cell reference in row 1 that formula or that function will return the number 1 the same as right here 1 as I copy it down it'll highlight row 2 or any cell in row 2 and highlighting a cell in row 2 is going to return the number 2 so I could use this function right here if you didn't get that don't worry about it just select the period right there comma the last thing is the factor. Now this is the double declining balance method and the DDB formula. But if, so by default the factor is going to be 2, basically for double. But if I wanted to change the factor, I could do that very easily just by typing in a factor right here, such as 1.5 or 3. So you can change that if you'd like, but by default it's going to be 2. And since double declining balance method, I don't want to change anything. So I'm going to leave that out, it is an optional argument, close the parentheses, and hit enter. So we can see, C, depreciation for year one, 200 grand. Now let's copy this down, grabbing the quick fill handle in the bottom right hand corner and dragging it down. Okay, so using the double declining balance method, we can see these are our depreciation amounts. And now let's just go ahead and make sure we check a formula to make sure, or check this function right here to make sure it updated correctly. So we can see we've got initial cost, salvage value, lifetime, and years. <clears throat> and the most important part is the period is down here for number four. Now one thing that I uh, didn't mention, maybe it's obvious, but I'm going to talk about it now, is the units have to, or the period, periods all have to be within um, the same unit. So 
lifetime in years, so period must be in years. So just make sure that those are the same, otherwise you'll run into errors and not really understand what's going on. So basically because this is in years, the periods have to be in years as well. So, all right. Now I told you that this isn't necessarily a good formula or function. In fact, I said you probably really shouldn't use it, ever. Unless the salvage value is really high compared to the asset price, or for some reason you need to use this. Now here's why. Let me go ahead and show you how much we have left to depreciate, which we can no longer do if we follow this method. Okay, <clears throat> so I have a column here, amount left. Now what this does is it subtracts, the, it, goes, it takes the initial cost, subtracts the salvage value, and then subtracts the depreciation for the year. But we can see at the very end, and you can check out the formula if you'd like here, I made it very simple so it's easy to understand. At the end, we still have $13,880 that we could have depreciated, but that we didn't if we followed this function. So you need to be very careful when using this. The most important thing is simply that you know that this happens. So sure, you can use the function, just know that using the DDB function isn't going to perform a switch so that you're never going to actually be in the straight line depreciation. And that's where the variable declining balance method comes in handy. So what we'd like to achieve here is um, when your depreciation amount for the period is less than what the corresponding straight line depreciation amount would be from that period forth, then you would want to switch to straight line depreciation, which is allowed by GAF. Although I'm not giving you advice, spitting out some facts. So. Anyway, this is how you can use the DDB formula. This is what it is right here. And this is the illustration of why you maybe shouldn't use it. So if you'd like to get this workbook, go to teachexcel.com, search for the video tutorial, and you can download it there. Once again, I want to say you're asking yourself, why did I do this tutorial? Just to round out all of the depreciation functions within Excel. So that's it for this tutorial.